Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the monomorphism restriction. So this is a um, feature uh, that that uh, was introduced way back in the beginning of Haskell and um, it, it, still, it still is around, still causes some confusion every now and then, and interestingly it can actually cause change in runtime performance and so i want to explore that a little bit um unlike some videos this one is is sort of raw this is not cooked up um i don't know exactly where this is going to go we're going to do some experiments we're going to see what, what what we find out uh but sometimes i think it's fun to, to sort of see this all in action so we'll see all that play out um so i want to start with with what the monomorphism restriction is is really about right as we know if i have x is an integer, and then y here is, well, let's make it something even more exotic, a double, I can say in both cases that y is 3. Um, and then so when I load this into GHCI, that, that succeeds, right? So even though I've written 3 in both places, it works in both places. And the reason for that, of course, is that Haskell has overloaded numbers. Um, so the real type of 3, if I ask GHCI, what is the type of 3? Well, it's any type p as long as p is in the num class. And of course, we have num instances for integer and double. OK, uh, most people know that. But I want to look at what happens now if we just say x equals 3 with no type signature. So that loads just fine, and I can ask, what's the type of x? So we might think that the type of x would be nump, arrow p, um, but it's not. It's integer. So that's a little odd. Let's, let's explore that a little bit. Um, so now I can say something like this. If I say y, colon, colon, integer, y equals x, we should expect that to work. Uh, and that does work. I don't even have to check any types here. Um, so that's all good. Uh, what if I say y is double? Is that going to work? After all, this inferred that x was integer. So does that, that work? Oh, that still works. That's a little odd. Let's see. What's that type of x again? Oh, now it's double. Mm, something very strange is going on. What if I say this? What if I have it both integer and double? Now we get an error. Cannot match integer with double. Ugh. What's going on here? So what's going on here is that the monomorphism restriction is applying to this declaration uh, uh, for x here. So what, what does that mean? So that means the monomorphism restriction says that it, it forces a, a, um, a definition that does not have a type signature to be monomorphic. And, and we'll explore why in, in just a moment. But what it says here is that this x must be monomorphic. It can't be for all p, num p, arrow p. I mean, I could write that type signature. And then now the program is accepted. But we're never going to infer a signature like that as long as the monomorphism restriction is in effect. right? Um, so the idea here is that instead of just figuring out what x's type should be from its own definition, we look at all use sites of x. And so here we use x as a double. Here we use x as an integer, and so that's why there's a clash. Um, so another way I could get this program to be accepted is if I just turn off the, the monomorphism restriction with no monomorphism restriction. And now my program is accepted again because that disables the monomorphism restriction, allowing us to infer a polymorphic type for x. OK, so that's, that's the basic uh, scheme here. So um, uh, one other note, just, you know, I'm sure people are curious, when does the monomorphism restriction apply? Well, it applies to any definition that doesn't, that, that, that where you're inferring the type, that doesn't have a type signature, but that doesn't look like a function. So for example, if I write this, that doesn't look like a function. There's no variable bound to the left-hand side of plus here. And so let's turn on the monomorphism restriction again. This won't compile. Let's kill that. And now if I compile this, I ask, what is the type of plus? Well, it's monomorphic. The monomorphism restriction says that plus's type must be monomorphic. Um, and so, so this would be, so actually if I use, for example, plus y, y, well, that's going to be an error because y has type double. That's no good. Um, on the other hand, if I say plus x, y equals, doesn't matter, infix or prefix. So now I have plus and plus. Here the type is going to infer all integers. But here, well, because that looks like a function, it'll, it, 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 we're allowed to be polymorphic, right? Because the monomorphism restriction does not apply when you have arguments. Um, OK, so that's, that's sort of the basics. There's a few more subtleties. I don't want to get into those subtleties right now. I want to look at, at runtime performance. Um, so the reason 
the reason that we have the monomorphism restriction at all, why do we why does this why is this feature here? It's because when we have, let's look at the more polymorphic type for X. So what this means, this polymorphic type here, means that X is actually a function. We can't really compute three because, well, three of type double is different runtime data than three of type integer. So in both of these occurrences of X, we actually have to do separate computation. So now we can imagine, well, what if we have something that's a little harder to compute? What if I have, for example, a million threes of which I take the last, right? This compiles, um, but now I want to go down here and let's say main equals do, and we're going to print y and print z. Um, and let me get out of GHCI here, and I will go over to my shell, and then let's compile. Okay, and then now let's run this. So it, it still runs fairly quickly, um, but I can actually uh, measure the amount of allocation it's doing. And so if I do plus RTS-T, notice I'm doing this on the compiled executable, not GHC. You could do this for GHC because GHC is also a Haskell program, but then you're going to get information about how hard it is to compile. That's not what we want here. We're talking about runtime performance for once. So here I can see how much it, it allocates. So to, to run this program, because it's going to, to produce um, a million threes, I think. I don't know if the optimizer is going to kick in here. I don't think so. Um, then we get a whole lot of bytes. What is that? 112 megabytes um, uh, of, of work. Right. If we compare this to if I had just written three here, um, and then now I have to recompile that, and now I have to run it again, look at that. That used a lot less memory um, to do that program, but that makes sense. This is exactly the way it should be. Um, so the real question is, what if, so, so here, y and z really do have to be computed separately. They're different values. But what if they're not? What if I don't actually need different values? What if they're both just integers? So the question is, does this end up recomputing things? So I'm going to save that. Let me recompile. And we're going to run this. And so here we get a lot of running. Now, if I just comment out the type signature and recompile, and run. Wow, it uses half as much memory. That makes sense, right? So here, because the monomorphism restriction applies, then here, this, this, all of this computation, all of that work only gets done once. And then we've computed x, and then in both of these occurrences, we don't have to redo all of that work. And so it makes sense that this second run is about half as much work as the, as the first. So this is a little bit scary, right? Because the, the monomorphism restriction, sometimes we have this big program, and then maybe somewhere else in your program, unrelated to, to the interesting part here. So let's, let's just get rid of that entirely. And now somewhere else I'm doing something, I don't know, my len equals length. And then now if I do this, oops, Oh, what's happening here? Oh, ambiguous, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, I sort of wanted that, but I sort of didn't. Um, what do I want? Um, I, could, I could explore that further with extended default rules. This will work with extended default rules. I just, I'm just going to show this off. Aha, look at that. Um, and that's because now we can default foldable constraints. I don't want to get too involved with that. That's just a, a little tidbit for fun. Let's get rid of that. Um, instead, uh, let's let's go back to this other example here. Let's say I want to redefine plus. I'm not using it down here. And then um, let's say I have a is an integer and a is plus three five and b is a double and b is plus seven eight. Well, this isn't going to work, right? Because plus has been monomorphized. And notice I'm not using any of these definitions, but so I say, oh, that's silly of me. I'm going to now turn off the monomorphism restriction. Um, and so that plus works. And now my module compiles. But, but when I turn off the monomorphism restriction, 
that's now going to change the runtime behavior of my program. So let's let's make sure that that's actually happening. So if I go here and if I compile and run, now we have this bad runtime. That's too much work. And it all is because I'm too lazy to write a type signature on plus, and I turn off the monomorphism restriction instead. Mm. So this is very dangerous. Um, so uh, one thing I want to check, this is, this is part of the I don't know what's going to happen here, is what happens if I turn on the optimizer? Will the optimizer be able to figure this out? So let's ghc02, and let's make sure it's really doing its work. So force recomp really forces recompilation, even if I haven't edited the file. And now I run. Oh, and now it's clever. Um, so that's very good. Uh, let's see what happens if I turn on the monomorphism restriction again. And then we have to comment that out because that stuff won't compile. And if I recompile and then run, we get the same behavior. So, so here, the optimizer is clever enough to be able to do this. But now we're sort of depending on, is the optimizer really going to be clever enough all the time? Uh, it's, it's unclear to me whether that will be the case. Um, in any case, maybe I end up using exit multiple types and it really does have to do the work twice, even though you're not thinking it will. The bottom line here is that the monomorphism restriction, it can get in your way. It's kind of annoying, but it's there for a good reason. And so we should be thoughtful before just turning it off right away. In most cases, it's much safer just to add a type annotation, right? If, uh, in, if I wanted this plus here, um, instead of disabling the monomorphism restriction, I could have just said, given the type here. Um, and then now, uh, the monomorphism restriction is still in effect. And even if I compile, oops, I want to be in shell, not there. Even if I compile without optimizations, and then run, now we get the quicker unoptimized runtime. Uh, because here the monomorphism restriction is in effect, and so we only end up computing this once. Um, if we're too lazy to write this, we can even just write this. Right? That's just saying, you know, infer the type here, but but make it a constrained type. Um, so here we will need partial type signatures, and we'll get some warnings, I'm sure. Um, whoops. Yes, but but it linked. And then now, of course, we still get the better runtime. Hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.